Good afternoon, everybody. It's Chuck Everson with the Big East Rewind and my partner and host, Sonny Sperra from Syracuse University. And Sonny, we have a big, big show today in store. We got the Johnnies in town, the Redmen. Yeah. I, I know it's PC, I, but I can't bring <laughs> myself to say Red Storm, not with these two guys. Yeah, no, it's, two, two, that, legends, that me two legends from St. John's University. Gave us fits back in the day. Um, so, uh, you know, it's going to be fun talking with these guys today. One of them I know since I'm probably in middle school, we have a relationship with. And, and the other one, uh, it was a big time player, both defensive specialists at St. John's. Um, both did a great job, had great careers, and went on to do big things. The French Connection, we'll talk about that too. They're both in France. So why don't you why don't you open it up, son, and, and introduce introduce Billy? Oh, my pleasure. All right, so this is a guy that came out of New York City. I believe it was Columbus yeah. High School, and was of an excellent prospect. Uh, didn't necessarily have the straight to college connection, so he went the JUCO route. And then Louis Carnesecca kept his eye on that young man and flat out went and got him and brought him into the to the Redmond and helped fix that program. So Billy G, a legend in many ways and a pleasure of pain in the ass to play against, but a great competitor. Billy, welcome. Welcome, Thank Billy. You. And also my homeboy, my boy from Brentwood, Long Island, New York. You know, we we've played against and with each other off and on. Uh, since we're kids and been through been through it all, you know, and it was great. And we'll talk about this later on, but it was great to be able to be in the final four with Ron uh, together at the same time representing Brentwood High School in Long Island. So my dear friend, Ron Stewart. Ronnie, thanks for coming out today. Hey, it's my pleasure. Really my pleasure. My pleasure. So let's start. Let's start with you, Bill. Talk about how you got recruited, what the recruitment process was like, and what what convinced you to go play um, at St. John's? It's a little bit of a different route because you went to San Jacinto first, right? And then and then one that wound up in Queens with with Coach Conaseca. So talk about how that transition happened. Well, you know, actually, what's funny, Chuck, is um, Mitch Bonagur was after me. I was really good with uh, Mitch and, oh. and Rock. <laughs> really, okay. really cool. But um, when I coming out of the senior, I didn't forget, so I um, had to go to junior college. And so when I went to uh, San Jacinto, which at the time was supposed to be one of the best junior colleges in the nation, and so I went there, and um, I only had I had it in my mind I was only going to stay one year. And so I went there, got my grades up, and I was starting to look at schools again. I was looking at Las Vegas, Oklahoma, uh, a few a few other schools, and, uh, and then um, Conestaca at the last second, the coach in San Jacinto he called he called Conestaca. He's like, "The boy's going to leave," you know, because they had no idea they thought I was going to stay two years. And so uh, they bring me, they fly me into New York, and Connor Secker takes me to Dante, the restaurant that we always ate at the time. And Connor Secker's like, what, what are you kidding me? What are you going to do in Oklahoma? <laughs> He's like, <"What's> <laughs> you, know, you already got to feed the cows? Come on, are you serious? <laughs> Forget it. That's over and done with. You know, go you know, play in front of your family and friends. And shook my hand. That was it. I mean, before I even had time to realize what had happened, I was ready. <laughs> and back to the San Jacinto, packed my bags and came home. But but Louis had his eye on you in high school, right? Yeah, but I knew Louis since um actually I knew Louis since I was like twelve years old. You know, I used to go to his camp and um, I was kind of like uh, in awe of him. And you know, but you know, as you go through the college process, you know, the recruiting process, you know, you get caught up in so many different things. You know, you know, I went down to Las Vegas and Tarkanian and was just like you know. I'm eating with the Temptations. I'm watching, you know, talking to, to Wayne Newton. Hey, you know, a young kid from the Bronx. It's like, hey, well, I want to go there. My mother was like, that's out of the question. <laughs> so <laughs> I went to Texas A&M, and I was saying, well, I played in Texas for my first year, so maybe I'll just stay there. And then Oklahoma came in with all that football money, and it's like, you know, you go down there, and it's like, wow, that's incredible. And then I just came home to visit St. John's. It was more or less like I was coming home to see my friends and family. And I sat down with Lou, and he just like, he's like a deal maker. Lou was like, you know, hey, you know, this is where you're supposed to play. You're not going to go. What are you going to do? Feed the cows. You know, you come home. You play in front of your friends and family. This is where you, this is where you need to be. And um, 
I just was like, yeah, you're right. And, uh, shook, you know, we, he wasn't under the, um, the natural letter of intent. So we just shook hands. And, um, and that was it. Wow. So and you came crazy. in, you came in and when was Chris and Bill when, and Ronnie, when was their class right after you? Well, when I, yeah, um, they, they came, they came, uh, my junior year. Yeah. My, mm-hmm. college, my yeah. I got there. I would, Coach hadn't planned for me to come until my sophomore year because he had Curtis Redding. Because I remember, you know, we, uh, we, when I got there, he wasn't really a place for me. He just, he just took me because he knew I was giving me junior college. And he was like, you know, we, we got to take him. So I started out the first um, 17 games. I was coming off the bench. The first four or five games, I didn't even play very much. And then, um, you know, Curtis Redding was a little, he's a little crazy. And so he, he, Konaseka, in the middle of a game in Fordham, we down 20. So Konaseka comes in at halftime. He's like, look, we're going back with Billy, Larry. And, you know, this is like my opening day. I'm, you know, starting. He's like, the job is yours, you know, going. So Curtis cursed him out in the locker room. Konaseka was like, all right. So we, we, we end up losing. Like, we went like well, six out of our last seven. We went to the NIT. Okay, year year finished pretty bad. You know, we had some teams, Wayne McCoy, uh, Frank Gilroy, these guys, and they were all leaving on player. And in comes Ron, Chris, and Bill. And we just, it was like a whole new start. They came in with great attitude. Me and David Russell was pretty much the base of um, of the team. Then you put those, then you put those three in. There. You had Jeff Allen. You know, we had a, we had a really good upper class you know, people that bonded together. Everybody was like one big family, like a, you know, just a bunch of brothers trying to work at something. Nobody ever pointed a finger. You know, we worked. We had a really great work ethic. Like when you come to the gym, everybody brought their lunch pail and their hard hat and, and we went at each other. It was just a, a whole new start. It was like the, the school that I got to the first year <laughs> in um, St. John's after. Oh. Well, well, when you came in, right? You well, you're you were all Big East two consecutive seasons, and I think I was reading something that you felt that that was kind of some missing pieces with Ronnie and Bill and Chris, and you felt just like you just described that the team was now going to be something special. <clears throat> and I think you guys, I th- at that point, to me, St. John's is not only on the map, but St. John's is at the top of the map, and and I thought that was pretty special. You, you know, you know what's funny about that. Is- um, the, the year before, my sophomore year, we had we would go through a lot of um, difficult moments, and everybody would be pointing fingers, arguing, and this and that, and so on and so forth. Coach is not playing me enough. He, you know, he's shooting the ball too much. He gonna give me the ball. And um, me as a sophomore, I was sitting there saying to myself, like, this will never happen. I'll never have. I'll never have an underclassman looking at me as I'm looking at them. You know, and so. Um, you know, me, David Russell, we had Trevor Jackson. We had, you know, Bob Kelly was there. Bob you know, that, yeah, great. I mean, just great people. And so once we got the, the new, these new kids coming, and it's like, we worked hard. And so whenever we had problems, the thing was, we worked harder. And it was never, 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 never anyone pointing a finger, never, never anyone saying anything. So that was like, you know, when you see that, you say like, all right, it's there. Now we just, you know, kind of check it. He, he never let us put our head down. He never, he always, he, he would take, he would take the smallest thing and turn it into a positive, you know, because we got smashed against Georgetown, my junior, in the garden. And, um, and we took it, instead of it being like us putting our head down, we all came back and it was like, who's going to come to practice Monday and work as hard as they worked when we went? And so when we got back to practice Monday, it was like Georgetown was behind us. And we said, okay, we're good, but we got to work to be good, you know. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not going to be given to us. And everybody took that attitude, and it was just so much fun. It was like the, I, I would, I would, I wouldn't change anybody on that team. How about how how about you, Ron? How, tell us about how you got involved with the game, and and about your recruitment and how that process worked. How I got involved with the game was was kind of, it's kind of funny because um I actually actually my first love was uh was football. Mm-hmm. I was uh, I was I was pretty I was I was gifted actually gifted um, as a football player. As soon as I picked it up, it was something. And you know, I moved from Brooklyn to Long Island, and when I was in Brooklyn, you know, um, 
uh, the, I didn't really there was no football clubs or anything like that. So I would I would I would sit in my in my apartment room with my um, uh, Joe Namath uniform on and just you know kind of just like dream about playing football. And so you know I get to Long Island and it's funny, man, Chuck. <laughs> Uh, my mother would go to a uh, Pathmark. I forget what street it was. I'm not, I'm not Pathmark. Yeah, Pathmark. I forgot what street yeah. it was on. But uh, she would go past the BYA, and she saw there was a BYA, and she saw kids out there playing. Yep. And she would actually go go take back routes to go around to 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 avoid the BYA because she knew once we saw it, it was it was it was a wrap. Yep. And uh, so one day, you know, once once we got settled in, and um, you know, she said, well, let me, let me expose this to him and see what happens. Man, Chuck, she drove us past the BYA. It was nighttime. The lights were on. There was a football game going on. I went bananas. So, you know, it was really football when I started. And um, at about 12 years old, um, again, in the BYA, uh, I was a little, bit, a little bit tall. I wasn't extremely tall than everybody else, but I was a little bit taller. I was athletic, saying, oh, you should play basketball. You should play basketball. So I started playing basketball, but I never really, I, 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 I really hated it because I just really didn't want to do it. And um, until my, 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 uh, my ninth grade year, you know, I played seventh, eighth grade. I started getting good, you know, going to, to, to coach, coach Kellen, Kellen's clinics and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, I just decided that I was going to use that as my vehicle to get to school. And once I did that, it was funny because, Actually, my ninth grade year, Coach Coach Kellner, um, for the first time, brought, brought up a ninth grader. I, you know, because in ninth grade at that time, there was we was in junior high school, and he actually put me on varsity in ninth grade. And I don't think I was deserving of it, but he saw he saw something bigger than I than I than I saw. And then when Coach Kellner, when Coach Kellner said to me, you know, he said, uh, I remember my first my first practice. He said, uh, "Ronnie, if you work hard, you 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 know you 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 you'll have your choice of where you want to go to schools." And you know that was my dream to go you know to get, go to school. So, you know, I was like, "Wow!" So I really you know I really went at it. And then the you know the recruiting process started happening. You know the letter starts coming, and you know it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of you know it kind of impresses you. And then you start getting letters from school that you like you'd never even heard of before, never seen before. So I'm saying like, how the heck did they find out about? You know, and then deep in the recruiting process, you really see who is who. You know, those schools that are really interested in you, they come to see you. Uh, they make themselves visible. Um, and so my, when I was going through the, my, my junior year, I started, I started going on, on visits. And I went to, to a visit to just the two schools. I went, to, I went to St. John's and I went to Pittsburgh. And once I got done with Pittsburgh, honestly, if I had to do it over again, I would probably take my other four. Just to just to go, you know, maybe go to Florida or California or something like right. that. But I really, I was really a, a reserved kid, and I didn't, I, di I didn't like the like the, the like the smoke blowing, you know, and the, and the, and the you know the, all the theatrics. I I really didn't like that. St. John's didn't, didn't do that too much. Right. Um. They just they just kind of brought me over to Willis Reed's apartment, and that was kind of impressive that's within pretty, itself. That's pretty impressive, though, Ron. <laughs> that doesn't suck. That was pretty. You, you, you go into the impressive. captain's apartment for Pete's exactly. sake. You know, yeah, back was, there was, when you and I are, come from the same place, so I know what that meant to somebody right, from New York, exactly, a kid who exactly. played basketball. That, that was in no. itself meant a lot. Meant a lot. And then I went to Pittsburgh, and it was really it was like it was just like it was like over it was like overkill, like too much. And I was like, wow, I don't, I don't want to keep doing this. So it came down to Pittsburgh and St. John's, really for me, and Penn State also. It was Penn State, but it, but I, uh, I heard a lot of things about about Dick Hart at the time, and I and I, and I yeah. said I, I couldn't I couldn't do that. And then um, it was kind of uh, Pittsburgh kind of eliminated themselves. Um, I was at the, my girlfriend's house. I know you remember Kelly Watts sure. at the time I was dating Kelly Watts. Kelly. Yep. Right, and he's um, a great, great player from Rutgers. Matter of fact, oh great! When we used to play at the park, everybody exactly. wanted her on their team because she was exactly. so good. She exactly. was the only girl in the park, and she <laughs> and she was better than ever, all the guys. And she real, still hey, is. She she hey, coached sonny, my daughter she was, a few years. I believe it's awesome. Oh man, she, she was, was the good. real deal, man. She was the real yeah. deal. But anyway, I'm sitting there at our, at our house one night, and the phone call phone rings, and her mother picks, picks the phone. He says, "Um, Ron, there's a phone call for you." I'm saying, like, "I'm at my girlfriend's." I was like, "Who?" I was like, "Who?" She said, "Is uh, um, uh, what's this guy's name? I forget his name." He does, he does, he does, he does a, a, a TV now. 
Oh my God, I can't believe I can't remember his name. The assistant at uh, Pittsburgh at the time. Oh, Seth Greenberg. Uh, Seth Greenberg. Oh my God. So I get on the phone. And he says, "Hey, Ronnie." And I said, uh, "Hello." He says, "Yeah, this is uh, Coach Seth Greenberg." I said, "Hey, Coach, how you doing, man?" I'm thinking, "What the hell?" He says, um, "Ronnie, I hear you're um, you leaning towards St. John's." I said, uh, "Actually, um, I, am, I am leaning towards them." He said, "You know something, Ronnie? If you choose St. John's, that would be the biggest effing mistake of your life." Wow. And I said. Oh, wow. You think so? I said, okay, I'll, I'll take that in consideration. I hung up the phone. I was going to St. John's. Yeah. Wow. So, no I, said, I mean, yeah. It was, and, you know, and plus, you know, plus I was closer to home. You know, there was David Russell. And, and, and then there was right. a, the guy that, the other guy, that, the other, other guy that was invited to the, to the show tonight, Billy Goodwin. Now, I didn't yeah. know Billy. But I remember when I was getting recruited by St. John's, I would go see St. John's games. And, you know, when Billy was a sophomore and – I tell you, I knew David. You know, David was a was an exciting dunking player, but when I saw Billy Goodwin, I was like, "Wow!" Like you know, two way player. Yeah, complete you know, package. Yep. The, yeah, the complete package. Yep. You know, had the finesse game, had the had the power game, and was uh just was a nasty son of a gun. I mean, you know, it was really really, and I, that really impressed me. And then you know. You know, I got to, I got to, I got to meet him on my, on my recruiting trips and stuff like that. So I, you know, I said, hey, St. John's is a good place for me. But um, it was kind of, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of a process that, you know, I, I, I really didn't embrace that much, you know, because I just the type of person I was. And then um, in the end, when it came down to those three schools, uh, Penn State eliminated themselves because of the coach, and then yeah. Pittsburgh, you know, because I was, I was interested in Pittsburgh, you know, that, you know, t- you know, me coming in, I had a, a really good opportunity to play. Um, but I just didn't. Yeah. I just didn't appreciate that la- that last bit that was done. So you know, St. John's was 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 a place for me, and I'm and I'm glad that I went there. Let me you, let me back it up for a second, Ron. Now, back then, we we I don't know about you. I didn't play AAU. I didn't AAU really no. wasn't as popular as it is today. No. We so went. To, we Island. went to the. We went to the camps and stuff. We had to go to, and I remember playing with you at Eastern Invitational at Paul yes. Severamis' camp in New Jersey yes. a few times. And yes. you'd go there, and there'd be 100 coaches sitting in the stands, you know. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I've I, I, Ron Rutledge was there with, with Louis several times. You know, mm-hmm. everybody was there. Talk about that experience versus the AAU stuff. Because we had we had uh, Raph Addison and uh, Dwight Wilberon, and yeah. they played on the same AAU team. But and by us... Uh- we didn't have I, that opportunity. I, I saw that, man. I, I tell you, Chuck. I, I, I was I was either either we were oblivious to it yeah, because we're on be. Long Island, <laughs> or I because I, I, I had no knowledge of it. Um, I remember I remember um, when I was a senior, going into my senior year. Um, you know, they had things like the Newsday Classic, sure, uh, Empire, Empire had, State Games, the Empire State Games. I played against you. Exactly, and we, yeah. you know, I remember and, meeting and, you up there. Right, right, and we, we, uh, they, they had also the, the wheelchair classic. Now, I went to play in the wheelchair classic. That was a, that was like, Chuck. Honestly, that was one. That was my, my first exposure to like the other New York, right. like you know, like New York, New York, like Bronx, Brooklyn, and you know, I go to this practice, and I'm on, I'm with the playing with the Queens team, and they had Dwayne Johnson who ended up going to Marquette. Yep. So you know, I'm from Long Island. I'm not a fancy guy. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm just me. So, we, you know, we start warming up for practice. And I'm, you know, it's my time to take a lap. And, and you know, it was like, you, you know, you, you pass it to the, to, the, to, the, um, to the rebound line. Rebound line passes you to take a lap. So I pass to Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson bounces the ball off the, ball off the floor. I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm like, what the, what the, heck, was, what the heck was that? So, 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 so the ball comes down to me. I lay it up. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said go get it next time. I was like, oh, okay. So I can we do it again. But only bounce off the floor. I go get it. I dunk it. I'm like, he said, yeah, that's it. I'm like, okay, this is the number type of basketball. basketball. <laughs> but um, yeah, but Chuck, Chuck, it was, it was for us, for us it was camps. I, you know, yeah. the Easter Invitational Camp. Um, there was five star camp. Right. Which I think I did one time. But um, most of most for me was 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 the East, Eastern Invitational, and then you know uh, our local camps. With, our uh, local was, stuff with, 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 with Yes, but the big exposure was was the Eastern Invitational. That's where I got most of my exposure. And now, and the Top One Hundred camp that was at Lutheran. Top One Hundred, Suffolk One Hundred, and the Suffolk One Hundred. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. There's right. a lot of people who right. played there. Yeah. But AAU, <clears throat> no yeah, idea. Nothing. Right. Not my yeah. generation either. So. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so mm. so so now you guys hook up. You're at St. John's, and and Bill, I guess it's your senior year. The tournament gets moved to to Madison Square Garden. So now here's the New York team coming into Madison Square Garden, which arguably is their home court. You know, basketball mecca, basketball mecca, the whole nine yards, the greatest arena in the world's most famous arena. Um, talk about what that was like, that Big East tournament, Bill, because there's a famous picture of you. Sitting on the rim with the number one up after you guys won that thing with, we no, with the number Johns. four up. We are yeah. St. John's. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. And first of all, how the heck did you get up on top of the rim, first of all? <laughs> that was Bill Willington. But, um, you know, the thing was, um, you know, we had played the first the first uh, Biggie tournament I played was in Syracuse, and that was incredible also. I mean, you know, you had all the people up there. And then we played the, I think my, my junior year, it was in Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was Connecticut. And then um, Commissioner Gavitt, he was like, um, we're going to have to, we're going to meet, you know, the Big East was going so fast. He's like, you know, we got to go with it. So he made the move to the garden. And so everybody was kind of pumped about it. But we all, we kind of knew that it was like, it was our home court. But it was more like, um, for me, David and Trevor, it was our last year. It was our last shot at it. And we wanted to leave with Trump as the coach. So, um, you know, home court, you know, we had took a couple of beatings in there by with Georgetown. We took a beat, you know, so we knew what it was. You know, we knew we, we already had that discipline in us that, um, you know, we didn't go in with this saying it's our home court. We went in saying we were going to work. Like, this is, uh, this is it. We, we were, we, the funny thing is we went in ranked number two because Boston College beat us twice that year and we tied. We, we we tied with uh I think with uh with Villanova with, with you guys with Villanova, yeah. Boston College, you know. But we were the number two seed because Boston College beat us twice. So you know Boston College beat us in the alumni hall because we were kind of like um hey this is it man we got you know it's all <laughs> nothing you know we were down I think we were like down nine we were down like twelve at halftime against Villanova in the second game. Mm. You know, so it, 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 you know, the home court thing was, um, it, it, it sounds good, but, <laughs> but it was the big East tournament. You know, people was everywhere, you know, it was like, uh, fans. And, and at that, in the big East tournament, I didn't really feel like he was that much of a home court advantage because it was really like, um, it was the big East tournament in Madison Square Garden. And, um, you know, it wasn't like it was more St. John's people there than, um, other people. Not, 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 not in a normal day. Like in a normal game when we when we walked into the garden, it was St. John. But this time, mm. it was the Big East tournament. And it felt like the Big East tournament. But we also felt like we were the favorite. Because we could have played the Big East tournament. For us, we could have played the Big East tournament in Villanova. And we would have still went in there thinking we were the favorite. No. I don't know how I feel about that one. Now, I got to ask you a question. Mike Vaccaro wrote a nice article and called you Bronx, Cassidy, and the Flatbush Kid. He called Mullins a Flatbush Kid. He called you Bronx, Cassidy, right? But he, to me, you went from being, because you're so humble, he went from being an extra player to really being, in, in, in the opinion of a, really a marquee guy. And I can tell you at Syracuse, when we had to, to prep for St. John's, um, Unfortunately, I had to try to be Chris Mullins in practice, and we didn't really have anybody that could be Billy Goodwin. So, <laughs> and that was a poor job of being with Chris Mullins. But your 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 uh, your uh, availability and your uh, importance to the team was was not underrated. So, you know, you you know, it, it was a, it, this is where Colin Tech was really good. When um, first one, because when I got to St. John's, I was a freshman All American in junior college. Second in the nation in scoring, third in the nation in rebounding, mm -hmm. on and so forth. So, you know, I, I, I never really had played anywhere where I, where I didn't stop. So I got to St. John's, and, you know, in, my, in the back of my mind, I thought I was going to start. So, you know, when you sit on the bench for like 35 minutes, you know, it was kind of like weird in the beginning. And I wanted to transfer. And I'm like, ah, this is not going to work. I'm on the bench. You know, Curtis Redding is there. So Connor Secker calls me in the office, and he says, oh, uh, you know, when you become a senior, you don't want no hot shot, some hot shot youngster coming here taking your job. And so I'm like, I said to coach, I'm like, well, when I'm a senior, if I did all the work I'm supposed to do, a hot shot, a hot shot youngster can't come take my job. He's not going to take my job. 
<laughs> well, coach is like, ah, you know, it's not who starts, it's who finishes. So I started playing a lot and start really, really picking it up. People were seeing, getting articles, and then one day we're in the, in the press conference, and coach says, um, there's like, wow, you know, Billy's really doing a great job off the bench. And, and coach says, well, the, Celt- the Celtics has Hondo, and we have Billy. Wow. I said, you know, Hondo, I, I said, <laughs> you know, hey, I'm the great six and he on the best job. <laughs> you know, I <I'm> the- <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, I told you. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> great stuff. The hey, Celtics uh, got, we got Billy. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm the best job in my life. Well, don't you think one of the beauty things of Lou Carnesecca was the relationships he had with his players and his ability to get you guys to play comfortable, right? Uh, he never tried to fit you in boxes or squares. He let you guys be you, right? How, how, talk a little bit about the culture that he created on those squads. Well, so, you know, yeah. okay. uh, Ronnie, I'm, I'm going to say one thing when I, when I, I let you get to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one time I practice, right? I I made a great play, got great defensive play, stop, get the rebound, throw it up the court to David Russell, who dunks. So David's coming back and coach says, Hold it, hold it, hold it. What's wrong? What's wrong with that? Everybody looking around like, what could be wrong with it? Really just made a great stop, got the rebound, threw it up to David. He's like, David, you're coming back with your chest all puffed out and everything. He said, Those guys up in the stands, they're like, ah, David scored. But who made the play? Who made the play? And he built that in, into all of us that, um, you know, if Bill Winston got the rebound, Ronnie took the charge, or whoever, whoever did something, it wasn't the guy that finished. You know, we would, we would work to get Chris the ball, but Chris would look back at you and point at you and say, good pass. Or, you know, Ronnie, Ronnie went hard, got a, got a charge. We like, good, hey, good play. And, and we made each other appreciate. We made like, you know, it wasn't like um, – Okay, David, you made the dunk, and everybody's cheering for David. No, David would point back at you and say, "Great pass, great, you know." And 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 that, that culture there, where everybody plays for everybody, and every little thing seemed so important. It wasn't like um, well, I made the play, and then David scored. No, it was we played together, and it was all about us. And and that that was something that Lou installed in us, and it was incredible. It was an incredible feeling when you playing with people that everybody you say you feel like um, five people are just one person. It was a beautiful thing. Go ahead, Ryan. Take it. Yeah, um, I, I think I, I, for me personally, I, I really believe uh, for me, coach's coach's legacy is 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 built on his his ability to um, nurture and treat his players as young men and not just a bunch of robots who he's bringing in to help him shine, you know, and what Billy said about building a culture, it was so true. And, you know, it got to a point where it, 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 it got so infectious that, you know, you never wanted to play outside of yourself, you know, like when, when, when I, you know, I, shoot, I mean, I, I could shoot the ball too. I could do that too, but we had Chris Mullen. So if Chris Mullen is, is getting chased around, you know, my job is to get this guy off him. So, you know, I'm going to set a hard screen so Chris can get open, so Chris can shoot. So, you know, you stay, stay, with it, stay within yourself and doing what we needed to do to make the team progress. And he always told us that, you know, if, if, if the team wins, we all win. Everybody wins. And that was, I mean, and, and then, you know, I, I really believe what Billy said way in the beginning, it was the group of guys we had too. Yeah. I mean, our practices, our practices, our wars were like, you know, you know, we had, there was, we had to start, we had, there was a starting five, but I remember, I remember like guys like George Garrison, um, uh, myself, Jeff Allen, man, when we come to the locker room to practice, we'd be like, yo, we kicking the ass today. You know? And, 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 and we, we knew that it was, it was twofold because number one, um, if we if we push them, they was gonna be ready, and we will get we we will get we were gonna get better. So it was a daily thing, man. It became it it became routine. It was no you know nobody nobody I I I, I guarantee you nobody ever came to practice. When we came to practice. It was like 
you y'all y'all better be ready to that every day every day and it was it was clean though it wasn't like it wasn't like an envious like yo he's be- he's getting this no it was just like our our game our games really our games for us were h- almost harder our, our practice were harder than games right yep that's how hard yeah. that's how that's how that's how hard we would fight and then afterwards man you know in the locker room <laughs> you know the jump talking you know to prepare for that next day he said okay you got to stay there you got to stay there but but we came back, and but it was fresh and it was clean, and it was all yeah. in the spirit of help. You know, let's let's get let's get better. Let's get better. You know. Yeah. So yeah, he he was special, man. He was special as a coach. Was his fiery Italian heritage and personality on display at practice, just like it oh. was in the game? Because I also <laughs> play for a, a fiery Italian guy, and uh, I know what practices were like with him. I can only imagine with Louis. Tell us some stories about. Some of yeah. the crazy stuff that went on with Louie in practice and behind the scenes. I, I I can I can remember I can remember I know I know, I know Billy remembers this story really really well, but I can remember like you know when we started hitting our stride in that on that eighty three team because we had a, we had a, we had a, we had a hell of a team, and I was yeah. that was it was very disappointing to end as quick as we did um, in the NCAA tournament, but uh, <laughs> we were hitting our stride and. You know, starting to feel good about ourselves. The coaches was really about, you know, staying humble and playing hard and respecting your opponent. And you know, I could, I could remember, you know, we started hitting our stride, and you know, I wouldn't say we weren't go- going hard. We was kind of going through the motions. Yeah. The coach, the coach started to practice. Hey, <laughs> hey, <Yeah. laughs> hey, and you know, when coach, when coach would get excited, his eyes would go in like fifty million directions, and, and you know. <laughs> At one time, and then you knew you knew something was up. He said, "Hey, hey, hey! One day, <laughs> one day a peacock, next day a feather duster." And we was like, "One day a peacock, next day." So he was saying to us, "You know, you can be good today, but tomorrow you can be a damn feather duster. You know, you could be, you could, you could, you can lose all those feathers and just be a feather." So you know, it was stuff like that. But he was very, very, very animated. And I, you know, like you said, when you see when you see your leader. When you see your leader animated like that and uh, giving a hundred percent, man, you can't only, you can only give a hundred percent, right? And that's you know that's what that's how that's how coach was. You see you see this little guy running around, you know, and you see he doesn't miss anything with the, the smallest sweater. little thing, <laughs> the smallest little thing he sees it and he goes and picks it out. We might have done the sword, but he sees it and then his big thing was like when I speak when I when I when I'm speaking to him, I'm speaking to everybody. So anytime coach would stop. And you go talk to somebody. It was like everybody, everybody, I was like boom on coach because he's he, he was just, he was just so animated and, he, and you just felt like he cared so much about not so much about just the team getting better, but us as individuals getting better. And it was that that was that's a huge man. point. That's oh, a sorry. huge point and a huge distinction. Billy, you got I, something to say? Go ahead, tell us. My sophomore year, um, we had played in St. John's. So we had, had a great game and we got up, we finished, and I'm standing talking to him. It's like five nuns around. They're standing in between me and coach. So coach is like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going, I'm going back to the bus tonight, coach. He's like, hey, you better be fucking careful around. I'll get on that train. I won't get on that fucking train tonight. Like, so this nuns all around. He looks up. He's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 he turns back to me. He turns back to me. He's like, hey, I want you on that train tonight. Take the train tomorrow morning. But, but it's, it's, um, He's like a father, you know. He's like, um, mm. you know, it, it's like it was so funny because, like, he, I was standing there looking at him, and I can't believe he cursed because I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> was he, he was he approachable? If if you were having, you know, if you were going through it like everybody does at some point in your career in your four years, I'm sure everybody goes through that time where your confidence is down, you don't mm. think you belong there, mm-hmm. those kinds of things. Doubts. Did he? Did he was he available to you guys? Would he talk to you guys? Was he nurturing in that in that regard, or not really? Absolutely, totally. absolutely. I remember, I remember, I remember my fresh my freshman year, and just like you know, Billy, I'm coming out, I'm coming out of out of, out of Brimble, Long Island, which I mean, is not really a big deal, but you know, I was, me, I was, me I was, it's a big deal, Ron. Yes, yeah, I, I mean, for us, it's a big deal. But I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I, in, in, the, in the state of New York, I was one, I was one of the better players in the state of New York, and you know, I'm coming to St. John's, and I, you know, I know David. I see Billy and we got, you know, we got guys like Trevor Jackson who, you know, who are, I mean, I was blessed. I was, I, I mean, I was really blessed to go to St. John's to have guys like Billy 
And to this day, and, I, and I'm, I'm not saying this is Billy here. And Billy knows. I tell Billy this all the time. Billy, Billy, it, for me, Billy is is the the quintessential number three and one of the best threes that I have ever seen in my life. So you know, I had guys like that. I had guys like that in front of me, and you know, my my freshman year, I come in, you know, and you know, Coach Rose was like, Ron, man, you you got you got you gonna, you know, I remember the first practice. He said, Ron, man. You know, you got some, you got, you got, you got some talent. He said, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to wild coach. You know, you're going to have to make coach say wild, you know, to get behind that, to get in front of that eight ball, you know, the eight man rotation. So I'm like, okay, so I'm doing, you know, I'm doing my thing. And, you know, just like Billy said, Billy's feeling the heat. Everybody's feeling the heat because, you know, me, Chris and Bill are bringing it. Yeah. First game happens, man. We play, we play uh, athlete, athletes in action. And I'm oh, thinking, God. okay, wow. first game, I'm thinking first game, <sighs> first quarter. I mean, first half, second half starts, 10 minutes in, 15 minutes in, bah, buzzer goes off. Ron doesn't see a second. I'm like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And so instead of, instead, of staying, instead of staying in my apartment, my parents came to the game. I said, I'm going home, man. So I go home with my parents. I go in my room. I destroy my room. My mother comes down there and tries to console me. I'm like, yo, I said, I can't believe I, I that's that the first time I never play, I never stepped foot on the court. And so, you know, I get back, you know, she said, you gotta go, you have to, you're gonna have to grind it out. So I get back, go back to practice, and you know, next game comes, I maybe get a minute or something like that. And like you said, Chuck, I'm telling you, man, that's one, that's another thing. That's another thing, like Billy said, he's like a father, man. Coach's not coach's job was 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 out, was never closed. Right. Never. I mean, really. I mean, Literally. if when you walk in, when you walk into the, when you walk into the athletic administration office, yep. and his office is right to the right, doors open. If you oh, the, the soon as you you step set your face in that door, he says, "Come on in, and close the door." Yeah. And yep, you know we had that conversation, and I was like, "Coach, man," <laughs> he said, "Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie, be patient." I was like, coach, man. And I wasn't, I, I wasn't one of those guys that was like, you know, I, I like, I need the ball. I want, but it was just like a shock to me. It was like, wow, I'm going to have to freaking wait my, wait my time. And it was, it was only natural because I had David Russell in front of me. I had Billy Goodwin in front of me. And, you know, I'm thinking then when I, when I, when I sit, when I sit back and think about it with, with some, with some, you know, objectivity, I'm saying like, I was playing more than Trevor Jackson. Trevor was a senior. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, how was he yeah. feeling? But yeah, yeah, man. Coach's door was it was it wasn't it was in it was open. His door was open. So hey, 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 you used to work as the ooh you <laughs> you you was that <laughs> that was the joke. I said, Dave, he asked one of us. <laughs> yeah, but you know you know something, Billy. You want to know something, Billy? I rem I remember I remember um, before we started our, our our real practices, and we would go down we would go downstairs we would go down and play. You know, just before the season started, and I remember the, uh, the first time we the first time we played, and um, the coaches couldn't intervene, but they were up on the balcony, right. and you would guard me. And I got the first ball I got, I got it, I jaded it, it went in. And Coach Rutt was like, Coach Rutt was sh sh shot it down to me. Said he said, Ron, nah, man. He said we know you could do that. Show us something else. And oh my God. That's when I really got to meet Billy Good. Because it was like, I shot it, I made it. And I think that might have been the last basket I made. Because, I mean, Bill, are you talking about, you talking about in your shorts? Yeah. Billy was just like, I'm not, this kid can't, no, 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 no. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Billy was locked down. That's for sure. That's a, oh man, hey, Red, hey, Red man. Bruin. Red Bruin said toughest defensive player personally he's ever played against. So yeah, he did. Kudos tough, to you, Billy. Toughest defender. Toughest. 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 Just the toughest. He's a. He's, he's. Yo, I'm telling you, he's one of the best I ever played with. Hey, right, I, Dave. I'm like, hey, he has to win out of <laughs> <laughs> So, Ron, talk a little bit about. You know, now now you're moving on. Now you got to the 85, you get to the final four. Okay. In 83, you had a great team, didn't have the success you guys wanted during the right. season. We also had a great team in 83 with John Pannone and Stu yeah. and Mike Moe. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, 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 you know, I would say that that was a better team than, than the team that won the thing in 85, but compare the two teams, if you can, uh, the 83 team and the 85 team and talk about what it was like to get to the final four with, with three big East teams there. Well, let me tell you this. If the, if the, if there was not an 83 team, there would not be an 85 team. Okay. That, no, that, that, that 80, that 83 team laid the foundation for the 85 team. Yep. The, 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 I'm, I, and I'll tell you this. The, the difference between um, those two teams was a guy called Walter Barrett. Honestly. <laughs> Walter Barrett, I, honestly, because with, without Walter Berry, we are probably... Middle, I would say middle, middle to upper middle, uh, Big East. Um, maybe get a, a NCAA run, maybe get an NCAA bid. But when Walter stepped on campus, uh, we knew that we were going to be really, really good. But that '83 team showed us what it was going to take to be able to be successful in 85. A group of, you know, the class that I came in, sophomores, who were now going to be seniors, mixed in with guys like Mark Jackson, who was a, who was a freshman, right. Shelton Jones, who was, a, who was a freshman. Very, talent, very talented. But we were, we, were, we were nurtured by Billy Goodwin, the David Russells. And when those, when those guys came in, it was almost like, you know, it, it, the, the culture was established. So even though, like, Shelton was very highly touted, Mark Jackson was very highly, highly touted, but once they came in there, they, there was a culture there. Right. And they had, they had to be a part of that culture. Again, and we knew we knew we we were going to be very, very good. We knew it was going to be a process, right, because we had to, we had to, learn, we had to learn and kind of see how, how, how uh, Walter was going to, was going, well, not fit in, but how we were going to work around Walter and make him a part of this team. Right. But, but I can tell you, had it not been an 83 team, I don't think we would have been, would have been in the same 85 team. That's for sure. But let me share with you something Chuck said uh, that you may or may not know, even though you guys are boys from Brentwood and all that. But he did say that in the Final Four, Villanova did not want to play St. John's. Hey, you know, hey, Sonny, you know why? You yeah. know why? And, and, and it's, it, you know what? Because we, we, were, we, were, we were so elated that they made it to the finals. Now we had to go through the juggernaut to get there. Yeah. Yeah. But you know why? Because it was one, it was just one of those years. If you look at the, if you look at if you look at the regular season, postseason, for some reason, Villanova gave Georgetown fits. Yep. Fits. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, St. Villanova couldn't handle St. John's. You, it was it, just one of those things. Three Both times that year, <laughs> yeah, we beat you guys three times, and it was it, it wasn't it wasn't a question of talent because both te all three teams are talented. But it was just as far as chemistry wise, we just had something over, and I think the intangible intangible that we had was Walter Berry matchups, right? Matchups were tough, but it was just it was it was just one of those things. Like I was like, if we get to the if we can get them in the final, we got a national championship. That's what, that's, what, that's what we really believe. Now, I'm not saying we didn't, now obviously we didn't look past Georgetown. Right. <laughs> we weren't looking past them. We was like, please help us get through this through Georgetown. You know, but we, we really believe that if we would have got to the finals against Villanova, it that we had a really good shot at. Well, if you asked us all to a man, you know, everybody was rooting for Georgetown, but silently I was kind of rooting for you guys because I wanted you to get to the finals. Right. So we right. could play each other in the finals, you know, right, which would have right. been really cool. Right. But one of the best moments that I had um, in the final four that year was D train and I 
came out that you know coach mass was pretty cool about giving us some free time and we need to walk around yeah i remember that i remember so that Dwayne, Dwayne and i showed up at you guys hotel <laughs> i remember that yeah uh, and and we hugged and was like can you believe it that we're both yeah. together at the yeah. same time yeah. I, yeah. I thought that i just got chills talking about it i said that, yeah, that was that, awesome that was awesome man just that to be able awesome. to share that with you you know yeah that really was and d train too man i, I you know i met d, d train during the um during the um the Big East tour during the summer, I think we did one or two together, and yeah. uh, we became really close really quick. So that was that was a, that was really special for me. You guys came home to our hotel, man. That was really special. Yeah, yeah that was cool. And and that and that goes to the camaraderie, not just because Ron and I were close since we're kids, but the camaraderie of the Big East. Once you're playing in that type of environment, and it's a war every single night, every, every night, night, it's rough and tumble. It's you know you're getting lumps, you're taking your lumps, you're giving your lumps. You know, and you're involved in that. There's a bond that forms there. I really believe that. I mean, because mm. years later, you know, even you look at the Georgetown guys, for example, there was no tougher team than those guys. I think we all could admit that. Oh, my God. But but those guys, you, you didn't really get to know them. But as you run into them later in life, they're some of the nicest guys in the whole league. <laughs> and, I, and I'm shocked. I'm looking at go, are you yeah. really Michael Graham? Really? <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was um, some of those things. But, you know, talk about that stuff, guys, how the, 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 the way we played then, how close you are. Now, you guys talk with other guys from other teams, I'm sure, right? You're still close with guys? Yeah. You know, you know the funny thing is um, when, uh, when the Dream Team went down, they, when it came down to Monaco, I went down to see Chris. And so uh, I'm sitting in, the, sitting in the dining room with Chris, and Patrick comes by, and the first thing he says is, like, ah, we're not going to fight. You know? <laughs> 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 at the table when Patrick walks up behind he's like hey you're not gonna fight huh? <laughs> you know, I, I think you know it, it, it was um that, that's what that's what made the big go up so fast you know because it was it was just great great rivalry great game you know and I don't think we even realized what what impact we were having on on, on college basketball at that time yeah either. It was just so much fun. I mean, like, I was thinking about this today. You know, when we played non-conference games, my season didn't start until the Big East, <laughs> until the big East season started, you know? Like, non-conference games, it's like, man, come on, man, let's get to, let's get to it. <laughs> right. right. It was, it was right? And, then, and then, you know, you see the impact it still have, have on our lives today, you know, from um, what the Big East was. I mean, you know, money comes into play and then everything goes to, you know, we... Like the ACC start grabbing our schools because uh, you know football money and money and so on and so forth. You imagine this: we made ESPN actually. You see how made we ESPN. ESPN. We made ESPN, and this is what this is something that people really don't realize. ESPN was like a, a little back, you know, <laughs> etiquette. I remember their first brochure. I was on the I was on the cover of their first brochure because I stole a ball in Connecticut and, and dunked it, and I was trying to figure out. Why am I on their brochure? But their their um ESPN was in Connecticut. Mm. And that- hey, B- Billy, yeah. when when Ron's team and Chuck's team were in the Final Four, right? How did That's- you feel? Right, you're an alumni. How did you feel about your team? And and talk about like was there still a connection with Coach and and the the, the family of St. John's? How did that feel as a as an alumni at that point? Oh, uh, you know we. Even to today, we're still close when we see each other. But I was, I was, um, I couldn't be more proud of them because first of all, they were, they were like my undercostum. <laughs> you know? And Walter Berry, going to Walter Berry, I, you know, Walter Berry went to San Jacinto after me. He stayed with me. So I put him on that path to go to San Jacinto and come back to St. John's. And Mark was like our little boys. And, you know, then you had three big East teams. I mean, we had, we had surpassed everybody. So it was like, um, being um having you having played your career in the Big East and now we have, the Big East is the the biggest conference in the country. It's like <laughs> you know, I was proud of I was proud of the Nova, you know, Georgetown, you know, it was kinda, of, you know, iffy iffy, but they were Big East. So, you know, just just the, the fact that our conference the three teams in the final four was just it was incredible. And then my school being my school being one of them. Now, I've seen some great games, and um, I don't, I don't know if it's ever been done before. But probably Boston College almost made it, so we almost had four. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. yeah. They, they didn't, they, they missed by, by a little bit. You imagine that if, if the Big East had put four, <laughs> four teams in the final four, 
never done I don't believe <laughs> what happened so so Billy when you graduated you played professionally in France for quite a while right yeah 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 me, me, uh, me and Ronnie see each other quite a bit yet well you <laughs> actually um, I'm, hey Ronnie I'll, I'll tell you a story it's funny because the first time um, I, I played a game in um, in Poissy I think it was and you came in and then right after the game you, first thing you said you like Wow, you can still play. <laughs> it was, that was in Paris. You play. You play Paris. It was in Paris. <laughs> Yo, hey, but you, hey, 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 you guys, listen to it. Let me say something. Let me say something. It, I, 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 Billy, I, I don't know Billy. Sometimes Billy thinking like this guy keeps blowing smoke on my ass. But I'm telling you, I, <laughs> the first thing you said to me was like, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> no, because hey, it's not only so. Now I'm in. I'm in. I'm in Paris, but I'm. I. I, I had. I had gone. I had gone there, and I was really actually was just just visiting. And um, the team in Paris was playing. It was playing against Dijon, which was Billy's team, and I didn't know Billy was on the team. So uh, Dijon comes out of the locker room. They got. They have the fans like just ridiculous. They travel everywhere with them. So they got. They got banners. You know. Billy Goodwin, I'm saying, Billy Goodwin, holy shit, Billy Goodwin. I was like, oh, is that Billy Goodwin, Billy Goodwin? And Billy comes out, I'm saying, oh, my God, Billy Goodwin. So I'm sitting and watching the game. This Billy's just, like, giving them the business. I'm saying, wow. But, B.O., oh, man, Billy, 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 man, I, it's Billy, Billy is, Billy Goodwin is one of the best, man. I mean, he, in France, and he still lives, I mean, he still lives there. I don't live there anymore. I still have connections there, but he's still, he still there. But Billy... Billy was, Billy was, Billy was, I would say the notoriety he got in France to me was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> now he was, Billy was a, Billy was a, was a, was a, was a rock star. I mean, like, like Billy Goodwin. You say Billy Goodwin was like, 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 wow. And that's what I was, that's, I mean, I was, I, I was like, wow, you can still play, but I was really in awe of like, the, the following year, I was like, Holy whole persona, gosh. right? The Holy persona was star. like, yes, yeah. I was like, jeez. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. and I'm sorry, uh, Billy. Real quick, real quick. Uh, David Russell came to St. Paul Town, right? This is a team I was playing at Graveline, and so I got hurt, so I wasn't playing. And David Russell was getting ready to play his first game in St. Paul Town, which is down the road from where I was playing. I was not playing at Graveline. So, I, I go down, I take the car, go down, drive the key and play. So I sit there and I'm like, wow, you know, this is David Russell, you know, Duncan David Russell. So I'm sitting there, I'm watching Dave on the lamp line, he had put on some weights, right? You know, so Dave dumped a couple on the lamp line. And I'm telling everybody, like, wait till you see this. Like, this is going, <laughs> this is going to be awesome. <laughs> so the car, no David. <laughs> First half finished, no David. Second half, no David. I'm like, well, I go down and, I, and I'm talking to the coach today. You know, I know everybody. I'm like, what happened? He got hurt on the leg, man. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, <And all. laughs> That's crazy. So, Ron, you you played there as well in France, and you coached, right? Yeah, uh, I, I actually I, I I coached them way more than I played. I I I played really. I would say an uh, accumulation of. Uh, two seasons. I actually I went there, played one season, eighty seven to eighty eight, and I had started my master's degree the year before that, and I wanted to finish. So I came back. They had off after I fin well actually when I when I finished playing my first year, uh, we won we won the championship in national one. We went up to Pro B, and they offered me the, which is second division. Yeah, and they offered me a con a three year contract, but I just had this thing. It was just like eating at me that I didn't finish my match. So I went back, finished my master's, and when I went back. In um, in ninety two, um, they were looking for a a a American coach for the youth division, and it was between me and Tony Parker's father because Tony Parker's father was the was the good friend of the general manager who was Tony Parker's godfather. Oh. And um, so at the time, at that time, I thought finished my masters. The economy had shot. There was no jobs. I was working actually working in a factory back home in Brentwood, man. And um, I had been, I stayed in relationship with the, with the club was from 88 to 91. They would, they would fly me over uh, two times a year just on vacation. And I stayed in touch with them because of how I extended myself to the community while, while, while I was playing. And then when the, when the job came up, they kept, they, I, honestly, Chuck, this is just how it went down. They called me up on a Friday. 
And they was like, Ron, um, we we have a job opening here. We want an American coach for our, for our youth for our youth team. Um, would you interested? You all right, buddy? <laughs> You're muted. Got to turn your mic on, Ron. Your mic. <laughs> your mic's not on. Listen, you have to excuse him, Sonny. He's from Brentwood, and this is what happened. To, you know, <laughs> he but, got all excited about this job. Got all jacked up. Oh, here we go. Hey, hey, hey. You got all okay. jacked up, man. You got okay. all jacked right. hey, I know. I know the basketballs on Long Island are square, but hey, I know what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so they, they they called me up on a Friday. And they said um, Friday morning, and they said uh, there's a job. You know, we, we it's a between you and it's, it's between you and Tony Parker, his father, senior, and it, but it's yours to take because you know you play for the club and all this stuff. And I was like, um, give me, give me, call me back in five minutes. I went to my mother's room. I knocked on my mother's door. I said, uh, Mom, I'm going to France. So I went to France, and um, with really no intention to stay there, stay there. And I started with the uh, youth division. I started coaching the eight to ten year olds. That was kind of frustrating because, you know, their perception of basketball, they didn't understand that, you know, you had to work hard to actually get good. They thought Michael Jordan just was, was like an invention, <laughs> you know, like he, he just became a great player because God, God made him a great player. And then they started moving me up slowly, but slowly, but surely. And, and three, three years later, um, I'm actually coach, um, I'm Terrence Stansbury's assistant coach that played at, at Temple and played yeah. in the NBA. I'm his assistant coach. Um, after six games, they fire him and they tell me to take the team over. And the rest is history. I, I ended up staying there for 20 years. Man. Wow. I ended up, I ended up the, uh, the general manager of the, the same, team, same club that I had played for, uh, coached for, and, then, and I ended up being the, uh, the GM for that, for that team. Yeah. Wow. They were loyal. Good loyalty. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were loyal to me, though. They were loyal, yeah. they were loyal to me. That's I, what I mean. I, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they pretty were spectacular. Loyal. Talk about what you're doing with the youth over there. I know, I know you're running camps and and coming, bringing kids back to the states. Mm -hmm. and stuff, Ron. Mm -hmm. I thought that yeah. was a pretty cool concept when you and I had talked. Talk about that for a yeah. minute. Yeah, so I have a I have a, a nonprofit actually in France for for the past uh, now eleven years. It's called the Transition Game, um, and the premise of it is 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 really it was I I, I started it number one because my passion has always been, even when I was a little kid, was, has, has been uh, working with, with youth. Um, that's been always been my passion. So um, that coupled with, you know, with me coming home um, during the summer times, you know, on my, on my off time, you know, going to New York, checking out the summer leagues and running into guys that were like 35, 36, 37, 38, 39 years old, asking me to help them get jobs overseas. So I knew I really couldn't do anything for them. So I figured, you know, I needed to, to, to really um, instill some, some uh, 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 life skills into youth, into young kids, so they don't run into the same problem and help them discover who they are outside of basketball. So transition game is actually, you know, the, you know, the transition game of basketball and transitioning from basketball into real life. Real life. And so what I do is, what I do is I, uh, I, I, right now, um, it's comprised of me. I do international camps here. Now I'm here in Atlanta. I moved it from New York to Atlanta. Um, I bring kids from France over to here uh, for a two-week camp, and then I bring kids from here to uh, over to uh, to France for two weeks. And I just started an, an elite camp for, for you know because of this the COVID situation. You know, kids are not actually, actually not playing right now. They're not practicing. They're not playing. So to you know to get them ready for for the upcoming season, I, I also I, I put another another uh, branch onto it for for older kids. Wow. But yeah, I've been doing it for, for um, I started in 2010, 2010, so I'm going into my, into my 12th year, yeah. Great that's stuff, all a tribute man. to what kind of guy you are and the leader that you have been since I know you. So that, that's awesome that you're doing all that stuff. What, what about you, Bill? What are you doing these days? Well, actually, uh, I worked like 15 years with, um, with underprivileged kids, kids that had problems mentally, physically, uh, family problems. So I did that for the last 15 years. I have a camp also, a uh, basketball camp. It's called Kin, Kin, Kin Dancy Real Skills with Terrence Sansbury. And um, into real estate also. Well, both of you guys speak fluid French. I know that much. I've seen some of your videos and I, and I literally am like, <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Something, 
No, who said that? You sent me a check that there's no, no, no French today. No, no, I didn't say no French today. You guys want to share some French? Go ahead. I, I'm clueless. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I couldn't share because me and Ronnie could tell each other a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can we can see if we talk to talk about Syracuse and, and Villanova, and we don't want to do that because you know you guys are you guys are good enough to invite us here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once a, once a competitor, always a competitor, Ron. I get hey, it. Hey, 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 Billy, Billy, Billy. Uh, but really, I'm I'm starting to think now. What the hell are we doing here, man? What are uh, we doing? Now? We're sitting with a we're sitting with a Syracuse guy and a Villanova guy. <laughs> <laughs> See, Sonny, what Billy just said is Chuck is a very handsome man, and I wish that I was doing this show instead of instead of him. Well, you know what I heard? I heard it was Sonny is a good-looking guy. That's what I heard. So. <laughs> well, I think this I think this is a good place to to stop and 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 to and to say thank you so much, Billy, Ronnie. We had such a good time talking with you guys today. Really appreciate your time, especially Bill. Come, I mean, I know how late it is where you are. Appreciate you for coming on. And Ron, my good friend, man, it's always great to talk to you, no matter if it's uh, through through Zoom or, or on the phone or in person. Love you both very much. So, so thank you very, very much. Hey, thank you, guys. It's, it's Sonny and, and, and Chuck, man, really, I think that the concept is great. I, I really, really think it's going gonna, it's gonna to explode. And um, you guys, you know, I told Chuck that, he, you know, he, he's, he's in his niche, man. You know, this yeah. guy, this guy's you you've been doing you've been doing this for the, since since you've been out of school, you know, <laughs> keeping everybody together. No, really. I mean, I think and I'm I, I'm almost limit envious of what you do, man. Cause I think it's I think it's beautiful. I think it's great the way that you, you know, that you keep everybody together, that you keep everybody, you know, you know, in close niche and and, and up on, you know, up on everything where everybody is doing. Man. I think it's a great job, man. I really is. I think well, it's I, super. I, I appreciate you saying that. You know, at, at some point, the ball stops bouncing for everybody, right? But the yeah. locker room doesn't have to stop. It doesn't stop, exactly. You know? And that's yeah. kind of what we're doing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Friendship, yeah. Friendships continue. They're always strong. Yeah. yeah. I was okay. to talk to you guys, and I know, um, I remember when you guys lost Coach Massimino, man. We didn't for you guys. Say that again. I said, you know, I follow you a lot on, on Facebook. And when you guys lost Coach Massimino, man, I really, really hurt. Yeah. You know? That was a tough yeah. one, man. And especially yeah. he, he had he had some of us. Well, they Mrs. Mass called us, and we, we all, three or four of us, went down there, you know, to be with them at the end. So it was, it was mm. rough, you know. Mm. But I appreciate you yeah. saying that. Thanks. So Hey, man. Thanks for, thanks for having me, guys. Okay. Good to see you, Billy. Good to see you, Rob. The Big East Rewind was produced by Nick Chorus and Daryl Gurney. You can see us on YouTube and now wherever you get your podcast from and Spotify and Apple. And also, iTunes. if you have any comments or questions or if you have any suggestions, you can email us at BigEastRewind at gmail.com. Thanks a lot, Sonny. Thank you again. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. See y'all.